Well, it might be tempting at this point to say a collective amen and to put a bow on the service and, and head out to go and love and serve the Lord. We have, after all, already sung again of the assurance that is ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We have been given a hope and a future. We have sung the good news, the praise to God that the story of this world has a very good ending. What else is there to say? Let us go forth to love and to serve the Lord. Of course, even if we are ready to love and, the, and to serve the Lord, as we always do, we, we might be quick to admit that our commitment and zeal might not always be quite as hearty as our singing of those opening songs might suggest. We know how this goes. Uh, we live by faith and not by sight, meaning we take note of who God is and what God says, and we respond to that even though we cannot see God. And we do this while also often what we can see and the things that we do hear audibly are, well, they're quite troubling to us. What's more, to live by faith and not by sight is to admit that our true contentedness, our joy, our rest, can only be found in and through Jesus Christ. And yet, our actual contentedness and joy and rest might seem to rise and fall as suddenly and as unexpectedly as the stock market, or maybe with the stock market, or maybe it depends on how well our circumstances are in general. This can result in minds that are fixated on circumstances. It can result in worrying hearts and minds. It can result in sporadic witness. All of it together might mean that while it can be easy to say words like those from Psalm 23, it might not always be so easy or so natural to live as though we mean them. Case in point. Today, is the first time in five and a half months that this beloved sanctuary of ours is open again for Sunday worship. That note, in and of itself, probably brings to mind all sorts of thoughts and emotions and reactions. How hard it has been to be away from each other, not in this place, in a place that is so familiar to us and means so much. It's been a long wait. For some of us, it's still a wait, and that's hard. How sobering it has been to take note of just how many have suffered, have died from this disease that has made its way around the world and continues to be present in our community. How disruptive it has been to live through this pandemic that has altered our normal rhythms for work, for school, for play, for simply getting together with somebody outside of our household for a meal. How frustrating it is to have to wear a mask everywhere we go, even in church. And how maddening it can be to try to navigate all of this while hearing conflicting reports about what it is that we are supposed to be doing. That makes living with a consistent level of contentedness and joy a real challenge. It means that it's not always so easy for us to say words like those from Psalm 23 or like these words from the prophet Habakkuk as the Babylonian war machine was making its way to Israel. This is what Habakkuk said. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pens and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. That's not always so easy to say. And because it's not so easy to say, let's bring that before the Lord while also bringing before the Lord our thanks and making known to the Lord our requests. Would you join me in prayer? 
Our Father in heaven, you have created us. You've given us physical bodies that need certain things in order that we might live well. So we're constantly aware of what we need, food, water, clothing, medication, sleep, the presence of other people. These things come to mind so quickly, O oh God. We know that we are dependent. We know that we are but dust, that we depend so much on you for care and provision, and when it feels as though the provisions might be at risk, where it feels as though we might not have what we think we're going to need, we can so easily be troubled. And we take note of threats that are around us, situations that appear to be threatening, worsening in hostility and tension. We become uneasy. And as we become uneasy, as our minds race, as we tend to think about possibilities and maybe worst case scenarios, we, we confess that our contentedness, our joy, our, our sense of rest wavers. It feels as though it diminishes. And we feel once again like little children, knowing that we are in need, running to you. So we thank you, O God, that you are indeed the good, good Father, the one who always receives us, the one who is always attentive to us, the one who assures us of your love, the one who made plain your love, your compassion, your commitment to this world by taking on flesh in the person of Jesus Christ to bring about your healing power, to work redemption, to overcome the powers of sin and death, in and through Jesus Christ, who is now risen and reigning. All because in the very beginning you said of your creation, it is very good and you have made, remained committed to the work of your hands and to us. So, O oh God, we give you thanks that you have created us, that you have made yourself known, and that you do continue to care for us, even when sometimes we might be slow to recognize that care. So when we find ourselves beset by troubles and uncomfortable thoughts, draw us again to your greatness, to your love. Show us your compassion, O oh God, and assure us that because we belong to you, our lives are well in hand. Oh God, it's not just the daily circumstances that we face that can trouble us, but sometimes it's the ongoing reality of death. And as a congregation, we have marked the passing of two people that are so close to us. Early this week, we gathered for the funeral for Marty Prinz. We give you thanks for Marty and the life she lived and her laughter and the way she carried on with such ease and joy. But we pray that you would surround her family, that you comfort them with your presence and that you continue to shepherd them through this time. And then we pray for Kathy and Ross Genzink, for Kaylee and Nick and Lincoln and Beckett and Lennox as their mom and Grandmother and great-grandmother has now passed. So God, we grieve with them. And we pray too again for them that you would walk with them through this time, comforting them, being the good shepherd that you have proven yourself to be and promised to continue to be. So comfort them during this time. Lord God, we are uh, grateful to you for how you do continue to lead and guide by your spirit. And you've given wisdom and insight to so many people in so many different areas of life as we have needed to navigate this season that has been so difficult. Where all of life has had to be adapted on the fly, where changes have had to be made and implemented with, with very little forewarning. And we're grateful for how the collective wisdom that has been generated 
during this time has allowed us to resume certain activities with precaution, with some inconvenience, but, but we've been able to do some things again. And for that, we give you thanks. We thank you that many people have been able to go back to work. We thank you that some students have been able to return to school. We thank you that we've been able to gather in person again for worship that we can be making some plans for fall programming here at Maranatha. And yet, while we give you thanks for all of this, we continue to acknowledge the fact that we're still waiting. Not all have gone back to work. Not all have been able to return to school. Not all are able to gather together for worship. Not all feel that it is safe for them to be out and about around other people. And so, God, we pray that you continue to see us through this time, that you give us patience, that you assure us that you're ever at work, that you remain sovereign, that you'll provide for what we need. And all that said, O oh God, we pray again that you bring an end to this pandemic, that you rid the world of this disease and show the world the wonders of your love through the power of your healing. So might we see your hand at work in the midst of all of this. And as we note how troubling this is, we're mindful, too, of the other matters that continue to beset life and complicate life. We're, we're aware of hurricanes, fires that cause such destruction, such damage, such upheaval for individuals and families and communities. So we pray, O oh God, that you would have mercy on those who have been affected. We continue to pray for our cities, for this nation that's known a history of racism, injustice, and we haven't fully come to terms with that. And we're feeling the tensions and we're seeing them, O oh God. And this past week, another, another incident sparks the tensions and reminds us of the realities that we continue to grapple with as a society. It leads to further unrest, and we cry out, O oh God, because we know that we need reconciliation. And sometimes it seems slow in coming. So do your good work of reconciling this world, O oh God. Bring peace to cities, to communities. Help us to see the humanity in one another, to listen to each other's concerns to find ways to move together in fellowship. We think of our country in general as we are on the, in the throes now of another campaign season, and we've heard, the, well, we've heard the speeches the last couple of weeks, and there's so much where people are at odds. So, oh God, give us discernment and wisdom for this time as well. For those who are leading the campaign, speaking, participating, that you give them wisdom compassion, understanding, the ability to listen and to seek the common good. See us through this time as a country, O oh God. And with all of that said, we pray that you would continue to assure us as your people, as those whom you have called and gathered in Jesus Christ, that you are ever with us, that you ever empower us by your Spirit, assuring us of your love and favor, but also showing us what it means to serve you, to live as witnesses of Jesus Christ in this world, to, to hold before the world a living, breathing community that is marked by your love and your presence, by your healing and reconciliation, by the hope that is ours, knowing that one day Jesus will return and our bodies will be raised and all things will be made new. So give us strength to carry on faithfully in all the different ways that you've called us to live, in all the places where you've called us to serve, May you be honored and glorified. We pray this, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen.